This is the Pythonic Accountant, and today I am here to show you another PDF parsing trick in Python. We will be taking a PDF report that was sent to me by one of our uh, viewers, so thank you for your submission. And it is a 12-page PDF file, which has been uh, stripped of the original information and some fake names and data has been put in. And this uh, represents a grouping of vendor names and invoices or credit notes against those vendor names. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how we can go through and grab the vendor number and vendor name as well as the individual credit note information and invoice information and then export that into a CSV file which can then be opened in CSV or, uh, format anywhere or in an Excel file. So the trick here is to identify when the new lines start with a new vendor name and then after that we need to know when the new credit notes start or when the invoices start. In addition to that, in order to make sure that we've got the right numbers in total, we're gonna grab this number here, the first number after supplier total, uh, just as a control total amount against our open item BC, whatever that stands for. So what that'll allow us to do is validate that we pulled in all of the lines in correctly. Because when you go to the bottom, in some reports you'll have a grand total, but in this one there's not. So in order to make sure we got everything that we needed, we are gonna just add these up and that'll be our kind of gut check that we got everything right. So let's go over to our Jupyter Notebook. So I've already gotten the code written because there is actually some pretty complex stuff in here, but I'm going to walk you through each piece individually and then show you a little bit of an example of how it works as we go. So let me go ahead and restart my kernel and clear the outputs. And so first we'll start with importing the libraries that we need, which is regular expressions, PDF plumber, pandas, and named tuple from collections module. And then we're going to create our line. And what our line is going to end up being is each individual line, uh, whether it's an invoice or a credit note, these are the elements that are going to go within each of these lines. And these end up turning into the column names when we pull it into pandas. So you've got the company ID and company name, which we get from here and here. Then we've got the, I call it a doc type, which is either the credit note or an invoice, which you get from there. And then after that, everything else comes from the individual line. So fortunately, every line of a credit note or an invoice has the same number of items in it. You've got this reference and then the currency, the voucher number, the invoice date, due dates, open amount, open amount, within terms, one month, two months, and three months. So this is your aging. Is it current, one month overdue, two month overdue, or three months overdue? So you can see I've got that as current, month one, month two, month three. And just like other variables in Python, you can't start a variable with a number, and you also can't include other characters besides uh, letters, numbers, and underscores. And so I had to adjust the titles a little bit to make it more Pythonic. So next what we're doing is we're using regular expressions to identify what line is a company line and what line is a uh, invoice line. So here what I'll show you uh, an example of how we're capturing these. This would be an example of that you know company line. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, let's just get rid of these two parts because we don't need that. And so what we're gonna do is company re dot search and then we'll show what this is able to pull out. And so there you go, it matched here. And so if you do group, so you can see I put parentheses here. So that means that I'm gonna get catch group one is gonna be the uh, company number. And then everything before the space phone is gonna be group two, which is the company name. So group one is gonna be that V50012. And then group two, is going to be the company A LTD. So pretty cool. That's how I'm able to catch the company line. So not only do I say this is my new line, also I get the two elements that I need from it. Next is to determine which line is <clears throat> one of the lines of invoices or credit notes I'm concerned with. And this is actually, it looks like it's a lot of complexity here, but it's actually pretty straightforward. All this says is I want two digits followed by a slash, followed by two digits, followed by a slash, followed by four digits. And all that's looking for is the pattern 
of date and date. So a date, a space, and a date. And so I'm not telling it to capture just those items. I'm just using it in this case to say, that's a line I want to get. After I identify that line, it's easy to then split it. And I'll show you here. All we do is split the line by spaces because then it gives you the 11 items that you need. So let's take a look real quick and see how that works. We're going to do line re dot search. And that's my line that I want. And sure enough, it matched. It matched the two dates. But like I said, we don't care about the dates by themselves. We want the whole line. So let's now show you what it looks like when we do line.split. And that's going to give me the 11 individual items here that I need. So let's say I've got, let's just for fun add in uh, company number, company name, and invoice. That's kind of a proxy for what an individual line would look like. Let's go ahead and do line and see if that works. Oh, it didn't like that. So I think we need to explode it out. There you go. So that asterisk just turns us into individual items. So here you can see my line uh, now gets me the assignments of each of these individual items to the correct column name in here. So. This shows you how we're going to end up turning each line that we want into the line in the uh, pandas data frame. So let's go ahead and show you how to load this file up. And all the magic happens right here. So in this, whatever, however many lines of code, um, I'm creating this empty list for lines. I'm creating my totals check, uh, starting that at zero, and then I'll add uh, the amount to it as I go through. Um, this just grabs the, uh, opens up the PDF file using PDF Plumber, iterates through each of the pages, and then for each page that it goes through, I'm going to extract the text and put it into this text variable. So now I want to go through each line in the text. So for line in text.split new line character, because when you just grab the text, it just it's one big blob of text. But if you want to iterate through the lines, you have to split it by that end of the line new line character, which is this symbol here. Um, so now I'm grabbing the company name. So company name equals company re, you know, re search line, which shows you how that worked above. And if that returns something, then now I have the vendor number and vendor name from those two groups that I showed you. Um, otherwise, now I'm going to check to see if this is uh, the start of my invoices or if the start of my credit notes. So if it's one of those two, now I know that I'm going to assign doc type to the string invoice or credit notes. And then all of my uh, new lines of an invoice or a credit note is now going to be labeled as invoices and credit notes appropriately. And so you'll see that it just resets as it finds whichever one it gets to. Now, if it finds the line, it's going to create that uh, variable items is going to hold the lines dot split and then I just append, or the line dot split, and then I append this list with the, uh, the line named tuple up there. So first it grabs the vendor number, which was up here, the vendor name, which I grabbed here, the doc type, which I grabbed in one of these two, and then the exploded out items, which is these items here that I found in each of these lines. So well, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Oh, and then the last piece is, uh, if it starts with supplier total, uh, supplier total right here, then it's going to grab the third item from that list of split items and then take that number and it's going to append it to the total. Uh, first, I turn it into a float so that way it actually is a number. So run this and it was very quick. So now let's show you uh, the first couple of lines. So lines five and sure enough, you've got uh, five lines right here with the company ID. And it's the same company ID for the first two lines. And actually, let's just do first three. So you've got one, two, three. First company ID for the same three lines. And company name changes. So that's interesting. And let's just validate that that's correct. OK, so maybe this reference here is not necessarily the same company ID. I'll deal with that next time. But <clears throat> at least we're pulling that first reference out and correctly saying, OK, this is company A limited. And it has one credit note. So here's the credit note for that company. And then the next two, Cargo Safe Travel Limited, those are both invoices. And it grabs both of the invoices. So cool. Looks like it's working. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a data frame with that data and look at the head. So sure enough, you've got uh, all of the first five records look like they're correct. So, so far so good. So now what we're gonna do is do a couple of interesting things to help the data even be more correct before we load it up into uh, the CSV. So df.info is gonna tell us the types. So you can see here, if you're familiar with data frames, your invoice date and due date are objects but not date times. So we're gonna convert those to date times with that simple process there. And now those are date times. So the cool thing is if you wanted to do some date time calculations in uh, Python, you can now do that. Um, next, we're going to convert the amounts in the last six columns. So these six columns right here, for each of those, we're gonna go ahead and convert the dollar amounts into floats with a little bit of code right here. So run that and that's our now done. And now these are all floats, so that's great. Um, before, they would just be treated as strings and you couldn't perform any math calculations on it. So now, within Python, uh, we can do a sum and check to see the total amount of the open amount BC. And now let's check it against the total check, which that's the amount, if you recall, we added up the supplier total. Let's just make sure that they match. And sure enough, they do. So it looks like we got everything we needed. Um, so now we're gonna export this to CSV and go ahead and show the CSV file. And boom, now we've got our CSV with all of the data from our PDF file, converted all nice and ready to go. Uh, you can do anything you want with it from here. So hope you enjoy this video. This was uh, another fun way that you can export data from PDF files. If you liked it, uh, please click like. And if you want to see more of this, subscribe to the channel. And hope to see you at the next one.